And we're back. And we're moving into our second conversation for today. And as promised, we're finding out the latest as, what, as to what's happening at Galen University. They are rolling out a new master's program in development studies. And here to tell us more about it, we have the Dean of the Faculty of Art, Science, and Technology, Sherry Gibbs. And we have the organizer of the master's program, Dr. Filiberto Pinedos. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Morning. Thanks so much, Marlene. Good well, morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us to tell us about uh, this exciting news. So let's just uh, get a bit of a background as to how things have been going at Galen University. Uh, we know that uh, some schools are moving back to in-person uh, classes. What, what's the status at, at Galen? Yeah, we're, this summer semester is still online. Uh, but we, you know, fingers crossed that we'll be able to have things opened up and uh, classes resume on campus in September. Um, we, you know, we have to follow the regulations laid out by the Ministry of Health. Um, and so ensuring that we have the spacing in our classrooms. And so we're, we're dealing with that right now and assessing things um, and hoping that we'll be able to uh, invite all of the students who are ready to come back to campus. I know there are quite a few. Of course, we do have a um, a number of online programs and so for those students uh, they haven't missed a beat and it's been pretty easy for them but um, for those who uh, are usual are are face to face and look forward to coming to campus it's been rough on them so we're hoping we'll see them soon yeah absolutely you know I, I think um, clearly there's the opportunity here um, is in being able to have more people access but for those who do prefer face to face it's been a challenge yeah yeah, it has. Um, and they, you know, they're trying. Um, one of the things that we did from really early on, which I think has helped us a lot, is um, every semester students usually have to take at least one online course. And there's a number of reasons for that. Some of it is because of our faculty and having to work around their schedules. Mm -hmm. um, but students have been um, familiar with the online platforms that we have and what it's like to take an online course. And the same for our faculty. Um, I, I think maybe 99% of our faculty have all taught at least one online course. So when we had to make that transition into online, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't that difficult for us. We already had the platforms and everything set up. Um, it was just that the students were then, you know, sitting at home. I think for the first little bit, it was sort of that novelty, you know, they could hang out in bed and <laughs> not have to get dressed. But yeah, now it's, yeah. I think they're finished with that. They want to come back and see their friends. Of course. And so, um, for the next semester, what's enrollment looking like? We know that uh, times are tough economically. Yeah, yeah, and so um, enrollment, we, we're seeing a lot of applications coming in, which has been great. Nice. Um, we acknowledge and recognize the, the economic issues right now, and so we've done a reduction in our tuition rates. Okay. So there's a 20% reduction. Um, to, to assist those that, uh, everybody, but you know, it, it's really to acknowledge what's been going on and um, that people need a little bit more assistance when, uh, when trying to access um, higher ed. Now, let's, let's move into uh, the new baby of your bunch, of your program bunch, that is. Um, over the years, we've seen Galen move into uh, rolling out some new master's programs here in the country. Um, I think you, you were the first to do the MBA program, and since then you've been expanding in, that, in, in your graduate programs. Let's talk about this latest introduction and why you felt it was something necessary for uh, professionals. Yeah, this, we're really excited about this, and it's something that we've been, Dr. Panados and I have been, um, and some other colleagues have been working on and discussing for maybe about five years now. Uh, so it is a long time coming. People out there heard, um, you know, sort of rumors. They heard that something like this was in the works. And so we got a lot of interest coming in. So we know it's there. Yeah. Um, but we were finally able to, uh, last September, really start focusing on developing this and going through all of the steps that are required. Um, we have a, a quality assurance director now at the university um, that guides us through developing new programs as well as assessing and reviewing our current programs. Uh, and so that was really uh, important for us to go through and to develop this and make sure that we're, um, what we're doing with this program is to meet the needs of, of the country. Um, I want to ask uh, Dr. Filiberto yeah. um, 
to uh, he can he'll be able yeah. to discuss a lot more of this being the the new coordinator for the program. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, thank you, uh, Sherry and Melanie. Um, well, I'm I'm excited too about, about this program, and as Sherry mentioned, it's something that has been in the making for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I have been working in the development field, if you want, um, at various levels, both in research and kind of in practice at the grassroots level. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I think like many, many of us or many, many Belizeans realize that we're living in a context where, you know, we're facing both at the national level as well as the international levels, some major challenges, um, you know, climate change, um, certainly is one of the biggest ones uh, that is uh, threatening the very existence of, of life on the, on the planet. And we need to do things differently to you know mitigate against that and uh and also kind of find ways of adapting to that reality so tremendous environmental challenges i mean i think the 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 pandemic that we have seen is partly connected to that of course you know greater interaction with uh between uh human beings and uh wildlife uh the quick movement of the virus across the globe is because of travel so a lot of things. So anyway, there's lots of environmental challenges. And I think the same thing in Belize, uh, you know, farmers will tell you, you know, it's very difficult to predict the weather. It's hard to produce. Uh, we're facing tremendous economic challenges. And I think, again, COVID has kind of shown a light on that, that uh, there are tremendous economic challenges and uh, we cannot do business as usual. Um, and uh, social challenges, again, I mean, I think the people who uh, are most affected by the pandemic are those who are marginal, those who are already poor and so on. So all of that to, to say that uh, Belize, as, as most countries are facing tremendous challenges in terms of uh, thinking about and crafting a, a future and or, you know, engaging in, in, in development, if you if you want. Yeah. And so that has been something we've been thinking about a lot as educators. We're very concerned about that. And, and uh, our role is to prepare people who can engage with those realities and, and generate solutions. So. That's why we're really excited yeah. about it. I mean, and, imagine. And uh, I'm glad you, it. I'm glad you moved in that direction because let's let's just take a moment and step back and and think of uh, students who maybe just attained their bachelor's or professionals. What would you say is the benefit of getting a master's in development studies? What does one learn, and what will they be able to do or contribute? Sure. I mean, this master's program is designed with Belize and with region in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the question of, of, of development is one that is, it's, it's complex. And so I think anybody who, I would say students who are interested in really in making a difference, uh, in, in understanding the social, the economic, the political, uh, and the environmental reality of Belize, and being part of the change, being able to, to you know, to, to have an interpretive framework for understanding what's going on and also for imagining what a future for Belize might be and the skills to engage in that. And that might be both in terms of research, generating kind of the, the kind of knowledge that would help us understand what's going on and, and, and consider options, uh, but also in terms of policy, which is focused much more on problem solving or community engagement and engaging with communities and responding to the, uh, the, the needs, the, the challenges that they're facing, or even in, in, in business. I mean, there's, there's uh, a lot of uh, things that are happening in terms of like what, what is referred to as social entrepreneurship, where mm -hmm. you, know, you can have, uh, from a business uh, platform, to make a positive contribution in society. I always, I like to quote uh, uh, Michael Rosberg, who's a friend of mine, who said, you know, uh, it should be possible to do well by doing good, which I think is, is kind of the idea of social enterprise. Yeah. So if you really want to make a difference, this would be a great program for you. Uh, it will help you to understand the whole concept of development, what are the options, and understand it from Belize, from the region, because it does have a very Caribbean and Latin American flavor. Yeah. And, and that was my next question. So where you can access this program in other parts of the world, if I am intending, for example, to work in Belize, is it an added benefit to, be, to, to learn in this particular context? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. the Caribbean, Latin America have been at the center of, of 
development if you if you want mm -hmm. um if you you know think about the history of the caribbean the, the emergence of the whole uh global system you know the caribbean latin america were very very influential very critical not necessarily influential but obviously very critical to that and so there are lots of ideas that have been generated both in terms to critique the global system but also to imagine alternatives and working from a place like Belize, where you are starting from the grassroots. Um, it's not about simply taking theories that have been developed elsewhere that we apply in this context. Of course, you know, I was open to all of those ideas and I'll always be a part of it. But I think doing a program right here in Belize that draws from the learning also of communities, I think would give you a key advantage. I mean, we have lots of students. I'm involved in, 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 in another part of my life in study abroad, which is students from North America, Canada, the US who come to Belize to think about some of these challenges that we're talking about. And why do they come to Belize? Because it offers them this unique platform, okay, for thinking about these challenges. And so I think you would have additional value. Yes, you could go elsewhere to do a program like this, but you won't have uh, that possibility of interacting kind of on a regular basis with the with the starting from the grassroots. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we we have no shortage of of areas that can be researched. Is that also something that you look forward to having students working on assessing the challenges we have in any one of uh, uh, the development areas, whether it's looking at the economy, poverty. Uh, gender issues. You, I, I know you went in detail with sustainable development. Is that also an opportunity that we're seeing here with the rollout of Galen's new Masters in Science program? Absolutely. I mean, the whole mission of the program is both to generate knowledge and leaders in, in, yeah. in development. And the program is designed such that uh, it balances theory and practice. So, you know, students will get to uh, deal with development theory, which is obviously necessary, but then can look at Latin American thought around development, Latin American Caribbean thought and yeah. uh, practice around development. And the, the neat thing about this program is that introduces students to the field of policy studies, so and the field of research and community engagement or, or, and social and uh, entrepreneurship. And so students will have an opportunity to do what we call a capstone project, which is kind of at, at the end of the, the theory, if you want. Yes. Uh, they get to do a sizable project. And the idea is to do precisely, do research, right? Engage mm -hmm. in, a, in a research project that will help to inform or, or solve a problem uh, or do a policy analysis, take a, a, a policy issue, research, look at options that could inform policy making or at least inform dialogue uh, around questions of policy or work with local agencies or businesses, local communities to generate a kind of a development project, if you want, yeah. to bring about change. So it is definitely connected to that. The idea is that it will produce both knowledge and practice that will tackle problems right here in, in Belize. Yeah. And I think by, if I could just jump in, I think by offering students um, those choices, you have those who might be coming into this program already working on the ground, um, maybe in any of the various local, regional or international NGOs, uh, maybe those working within government who um, are interested in in getting more experience or they need help with regards to um, policy monitoring or review or assessment, um, developing new policies or those who are working with communities already. And so it's, it's targeting those individuals as well as those recent graduates who are interested in this area um, and want to be able to get in, get in there, figure it out um, and help them understand maybe what area they want to to get into with regards to development. Yeah. And so I think it's it's one of those perfect programs for anybody, whether they've got um, experience in working with organizations already, or yeah. they've just recently graduated and are ready to, to jump in and, uh, yeah. and do some work. You said that this idea had been floating around for a while. What made you think that this was the right fit for uh, Belize? Um. I'm not sure what the right, the right fit for Belize. I think we've spoken quite a bit about that. I mean, of course, it's been in the pipeline. We've been working on it yeah. slowly. It takes some time to develop a, a program. Now, it is interesting that it's kind, it's kind of has coincided with this global pandemic where there's an interest in rethinking uh, what we have, you know, rethinking reality and trying to figure out, okay, where do we go from here? So the timing is 
perfect, I think. I, I don't think we, well, we didn't plan the pandemic, obviously. Okay. Uh, but I think it comes at the right time because it's forcing us to think about, you know, how do we organize our economies? How do we organize our society? Um, you know, even in terms of questions of, of governance in Belize, there's a lot of questions about that. So the timing is quite right. I don't think, as I said, we didn't plan it to work in that way. Uh, we're just, uh, in a way, I think it's fortuitous that it, that it has. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what that was your, your question, but uh, that certainly is what came to mind. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I hope you didn't plan the pandemic, but the pandemic, <laughs> as, as I, I think, uh, you know, Sherry, perhaps we've had conversations along these lines that there are going to be lessons um, that we're going to take away from this. And a big part of it is kind of this magnifying glass of inequities that exist. What is the opportunity of enrolling in a program in a time like we're in right now? Well, I can think <clears throat> of um, two things. I mean, um, one of them, obviously, uh, you're getting a, a new skill set, yeah. right? That as things open up and things move in different directions, you'll be positioned for doing that. So at a personal level, I think there is uh, a lot of um, great things for you to enroll in a program like this. But the other one is that I think is related to what I just said, is that I think there's an openness to try different things. Um, so which is, which is an opportunity then to actually uh, bring about change. But maybe there's a third thing, and there's like a lot of things that are how people are doing things. And I think uh, the pandemic has sort of stimulated people's creativity. They've responded to, mm -hmm. to, to the difficult circumstances by starting to do different things, whether it is, you know what, I'm going to start to do farming, or I'm going to start a new business, or you know what, I need to work with my community, or you know, we need to improve governance. So there's, there's all of that. So yeah. the number of acts are generating ideas and, and, and engaging different kinds of action. So it's also a great opportunity, you know, for thinking about this issue. So to me, uh, the timing is absolutely right. Okay. And Sherry, let's, let's get into some of the details here. Uh, how does one qualify for the program and when's, when's the start date? Oh, we're looking at an intake starting for our uh, new school year, 21, 22, so September is when we'll start. Um, we're accepting applications already. Um, and so we're looking at people who've got a bachelor's degree. Um, social science background would be really helpful. So anthropology, sociology, criminal justice, uh, even environmental studies or environmental science, national resource management. Um, but also people coming in from the business field, I think, would also do well in this program. Mm -hmm. um, they might need a little bit of catching up when it comes to maybe social science theory or social theory, that sort of thing. But uh, um, those are the individuals that we're looking at. And whether you're a recent graduate, I know we've had a number of our, our graduates within the last two, three, four years who wanted to go on to grad school, don't want to leave home and are looking for something um, more closed and maybe more specific something more focused on Belize and what they can do here. Um, and so this would be perfect for them. Uh, as well, like I had mentioned, those working in within various organizations, um, yeah. uh, various ministries, um, even if you're, you know, maybe a business owner as well, like Filiberto was mentioning, um, and interested in this concept of social entrepreneurship yeah. um, and what you can do to help develop your community. So I think um, we intentionally left it like this to make it broad so that we can cater to a number of individuals. Um, they'll be coming in with their, um, I think, these backgrounds. So if you're coming in from an anthropology background, you've got that. Um, you probably will have an idea of an area that you want to get into. And during the courses, you'll be able to focus in. There'll be an additional, before they do their capstone project, we'll have a capstone design seminar to work with students to really help them narrow down. So whether it's a research hypothesis, whether it's identifying maybe um, that area of policy that they want to get into or community engagement, what sort of communities do they want to work with. Um, and so we're going to be there to help help them and work with them um, every step of the way. Nice. And uh, let's talk about the affordability. Yeah, so it, we want to make this accessible for anyone and everyone. Um, our finance department has been working really hard on developing various options for people. We have our loan program. Like I said earlier, uh, we have a 20% reduction rate on our on all of our tuitions for the graduate, um, 
for the undergraduate, except for education, which already um, have a, a sizable reduction rate. Yeah. Um, and so um, that's there. And so for this program, yes, definitely. And of course, if students are able to pay up front, they get an additional 10% off. Um, and then the loan program that we have, as well as payment options. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it, it's important for us um, making education accessible and especially with this program. That was one of the things that was um, when we were going through, you know, this sort of a SWOT analysis and the threats and opportunities of this yeah. program, COVID um, presented a lot of great opportunities. Yeah. But then, of course, the, the flip side of that is the, uh, you know, those who would be able to afford coming yeah. into this program because um, of the... Uh, the hit to, to the, the economy, economy. those who, yeah. who lost their jobs or had to take a, um, a salary reduction. And so we're really cognizant of those individuals out there who, yeah. um, who may be struggling with that. And so like I said, our finance team is, is there willing to work with people. So it, I just encourage anyone, just send in your application, come in and talk to us uh, and, and see how we can get you through this program. And what's been the interest level so far? Yeah, we've been receiving some emails when uh, when our flyers hit social media last week. We started to get some emails coming in, which has been really great. Um, we'll do some more targeted campaigns. And even the individuals previously who had been reaching out to us will be um, letting them know that we've got a, a, a good, um, solid program that we've been working on quite yeah. a bit um, and, and that we're ready for them. And, and what's the schedule like for uh, for the program? Would professionals, working professionals, be able to manage both jobs and being able to pursue their studies? Or is it for people yes. who are continuing after uh, their first degree? Yeah, so we were looking at it being a, a full-time. And this is a discussion that we've had uh, of late. Um, but the first two semesters would be three courses that they would take. And then after that, it would be reduced to two courses. Okay. Uh, we're looking at five semesters. Um, 12 courses, 37 credit hours. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the total. Um, we, we do have a part-time option, which of course would extend your time uh, a little bit more. But, you know, again, helping you, um, whether it's, you know, for financial reasons or just you're working um, and you need a little bit of that extra time uh, yeah. to be able to get through it. And Dr. Pinedos, of course, as the coordinator for the program, tell us a bit about the other, the rest of the team that will be working with these uh, students. Right. So the, the idea is to, of course, draw on existing Galen faculty, but also to draw from outside of the Galen uh, faculty to practitioners, people on the ground, and as well as to uh, colleagues and partners from outside of Belize who are engaged in this kind of work. Um, so we have. Uh, already have identified some some people. I won't go into detail, but we have identified people who are working in kind of leading uh, leaders in, in 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 these fields in Belize, whether it's kind of the environmental uh, studies part of it, environmental policy. Uh, we certainly have people who, as I said, have engaged both in theory and practice, and that I think is particularly exciting. Uh, we have been talking to colleagues who teach in other universities who are also going to be, you know, contributing to the program, um, either by teaching a course or being guest lecturers in the program. So we are putting together a team that's going to be quite diverse and that will bring to the program, you know, some, some cutting edge uh, knowledge and as well as practice. Yeah. All right. So uh, people can start enrolling as of now. Yep. Send in your application. Um, go to our website, um, check us out on social media, give us a call, um, send me an email. Um, and you know, we can, we can set up and we can have these kind of meetings, um, virtual meetings, come, come into Central Farm if you want. Um, and we'd like to, to discuss all of this more with you, but yeah, um, reach out. Um, the Galen website, galen.edu.bz, um, I'll save going through email addresses so they don't get lost, but um, I think it's pretty easy to find us, um, to give us a call, send us an email. Okay. And as you said, the first program starts this September, so is there a deadline for submission? Well, we'd really like to get applications in by about the first 
um, week or so of July. Mm -hmm. um, but um, of course, you know, we recognize too that it takes some people a little bit of time. So maybe it's yeah. a big decision, right? You may yeah. not have been thinking about this and then you hear about it and say, yeah, okay, I want to do it. Um, might take a little bit of time to, to get things together for you to do this. Um, so we're encouraging you to get your applications in as soon as you can. So it's flexible. That's what you should say. Yeah. People can yes, call and flexible. find out more. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you telling us all about it and uh, definitely a great opportunity for people to take advantage of. Um, so best of luck. Thanks so much, Marlene. We really appreciate it. All right. Great to see you guys and continue to stay safe. Thanks, you too. All right. And with and with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about two more Belizeans who've been able to access athletic scholarships. We'll tell you more in a few. So stay tuned.